Now that we've looked at the basics of managing your inventory through the item master data, what I'd like to do is spend a little bit of time and start drilling down into some of the more complex areas of inventory management in SAP Business One. Now, when I say complex, I don't mean it's complex and it's hard to use, but the capability that it gives you uh, is a lot more detailed, uh, as you may have seen in some of the blog posts and some of the sessions we did around our logistics month in January of 2018. So with that in mind, what I'd like to do is start off by looking at the pick and pack manager. And we'll drill down and look at that in a little bit more detail. So the philosophy here now is that you have created your sales order and you're now gonna push your sales order across um, so you can start handling the logistics process of getting that order sh uh, picked, packed and shipped out to your customer. So you can come in here into the pick and pack and you come into the pick and pack and production manager. Now, if you're using an earlier version of SAP Business One, you might just see that listed as the pick and pack manager because in later versions of Business One, um, they added the ability to also start using the pick and pack manager together with the production capability in SAP Business One. So again, if yours looks different, that's potentially the reason why. So when you come in here into your pick and pack and production manager, you basically start off by selecting the documents or the orders that you want to go and start pushing into the picking process. Now the great thing about this is you can see you have all of these options that give you the ability to really narrow down what you want to push across into the picking cycle. So you can look at um, the, the transactions or the, the, the documents that are open. You can look at the documents that are released and you can look at the documents that have been picked. So the advantage of this is as your documents go through each one of these stages, you can you can get really granular and, and, and get each particular um, step in the process really managed at a fine level of detail. So I'm gonna go and I'm gonna look here at my open sales orders in the first instance. And I've got the capability here to group them as well by document. Uh, but I'm just gonna go ahead and I'm gonna say, no, I'm, gonna, I'm not gonna do any grouping at all. So the thing to bear in mind is when you're looking at your pick and pack manager, what you now have the capability to do is also use the pick and pack manager when you're picking and preparing the raw materials, for example, for your production orders. Now this can be handy as well if you outsource your production. Let's say, for example, as I know many companies do around the world, you might have got a contract production um, operation. So you pick all the raw materials and then you ship them out to your outsourced um, manufacturing operation. Well, the pick and pack manager can help you with that also gives you a lot of flexibility as I pointed out in my blog post that that you have the ability to select those uh, orders if you've chosen to work with the sales orders it, it gives you the ability to select them on the basis of the parameters that you put here and you can see that there's a number of these different parameters like the sales order number the posting date the required date now they're the ones that we just happen to choose here in the selection list but you can see when you come down here to one of these empty parameter groupings, you've got all of these additional fields as well. So it's only showing you fields that you haven't already selected. Now the good thing about this is, uh, again as I pointed out in the blog post, if you have created user-defined fields against the headers in your sales orders, you can then also use those to select on the basis of um, for your pick and pack manager. So let's say for example you set a prioritization. So you can set, you've got the standard BP priority that's there, but you could also have for example, you might have a, um, you know, like you might classify your customers according to um, a loyalty level, gold, silver, or bronze. That's one I pick on all the time when we talk about um, user-defined fields. But you want to then be able to say, look, I want to pick my orders for my gold customers first. So, you know, when you set a customer's gold, that then gets flagged automatically through a formatted search against your order. Uh, and then you can select it here and say, you know what, I want to select all of the customers that are gold customers and, and do my pick and pack run for them. 
So you've got a lot of flexibility there when you're generating this. And then of course, if you have multiple warehouses, you've got the ability to then specify which of those warehouses that you want to select the sales orders from. Now this is also very helpful if you're starting to do your picking and packing for your inventory transfer requests. For example, you might know that your Los Angeles warehouse, um, you know, the, the shipping time is longer than it is uh, from the New York warehouse if you're shipping to, let's say, Chicago. So you've got the ability to then be able to grab um, those Los Angeles orders first because you know you've got that longer lead time. So again, you know, you're only limited really by, the, the, by your imagination and of course your imagination is usually going to be dictated by your business process. So that's one of the things I really like about the pick and pack manager. Then of course when the items are being selected, you can specify I want them sorted in a certain priority or in a certain order. So you know, delivery or due date's a good one. Uh, again, business partner code or document number, warehouse, or there we go again, there's our business partner priority. So once you've selected those parameters, what you can then do is you basically say okay, and it's just telling you down the bottom here that documents awaiting approval were excluded. So you might have sales orders that are actually going through the approval process. They're not gonna get picked up in the pick and pack manager here, but you've now got all of these documents and you can see these are all the documents that are open. Now, of course, they go through a process. They go from open into released and then from released, once they've been picked, uh, and you've recorded the picking, they go here into being picked. And of course, you can go in here at any point in time and you can just simply select one of these drawers to see the transactions that are in each one of these stages. Now, you've also got the ability to have a detailed view. So you can see here is my detailed view, or sorry, when I'm looking at my open orders. I don't get that option to have the detailed or the summary view. So let's go ahead and let's actually pick uh, a couple of these orders. So I'm gonna go here to open. And I've got a few lines, so I can go in here and simply by selecting those lines, and I'm gonna select everything that's in my order number 377. So that's all of these lines here. Now, of course, don't forget you could do some nifty stuff if you want to, you know, automate the selection of those uh, of those transactions. Um, but I'm just going to select them manually for now. So that's everything in order 377. And then what I can do is I can go here and I can go straight to the delivery process. I can go and create a manual delivery or an automatic delivery, so I can skip the picking process. Or I can say here. I want to release that to my pick list. So then it kicks off the generation wizard, the pick list generation wizard, and then you've got the ability to be able to split your pick lists uh, according to these different parameters by business partner, document type, by document, uh, and so on and so forth. So this just gives you the ability to, and the one that's in particular can be helpful is if you want to split them by warehouse, because you could have a central person um, who's not even in that warehouse generating your pick lists uh, and then automate the process of sending the pick lists out to all those different warehouses. Again, a great scenario if you've got a third party logistics company, you know, if you've got contract warehousing uh, happening inside your organization and you just want to send the pick list out either as a report or you can convert it to some kind of electronic document and send it across to them. So again, you've got the ability there to split them by warehouse. So you get all of your pick lists for one warehouse together, then all the pick lists for another warehouse. Then I'll just go in here, and I'll, I won't tell it to split them on any basis. Um, I can come in here and it says, okay, so here is um, my pick list details. So you can see I've already actually got this um, pick list. So I can go in here and I can say generate. Now, it's just now telling me, hey, your pick list date must be between the order date. So let's run it, run that again. So I'm gonna release it to pick list. I'll say next and next and generate. And again, the pick list date must be between the order date and the cancellation date. So here's our order date on this one. It's way, way um, back. And you'll probably find if I drill down on this order, 
which I'll go in here and just again my magical golden arrow drill down to my document number you can see here is my document date here is my delivery date and then if we go in here and we look at our logistics tab alright you'll see that there are additional pieces of information that you can record and let's just open that up a little bit more alright so uh, you go and you look at your accounting information as well you'll see here is your cancellation date I can just go in and I can select D and you'll see again that sets it to today's date alright so as long as I go ahead and process this now it's going to go through OK so I'll go here and I'll say OK to that so I'll go in here and I will now release it to my pick list again next I'm not going to split them and I'll generate my pick list and again you can now see that that has been released to my pick list so now if I go here and look at my released you can see here we have all of these released items so again same scenario except this time I'm going to double click on the row header and that's going to automatically select all of these items and now I can go here and I can say you know what I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to create um, I'm going to create uh, an automatic delivery or I'm going to create a manual delivery all right so hopefully that makes sense now now that we've done that we can have a look at our detailed view or we can look at our summary view and when I look at the summary view you'll just see this is basically what I get all right is I just get this high level view and of course I can drill down and I can look at my pick list so now I've got my pick list there I can print out my pick list and I can go in here and I can record that I have picked all of the items or the pick list gets printed maybe I'm manually recording what was actually picked I come back and I can record you know what actually in this case we we're only able to pick 12 all right maybe there was uh, an inconsistency in the stock or maybe one of the stock items was damaged or whatever the case may be and in this one we we're only able to pick 10 okay but you'll see you're always getting as much information as you need to be able to make these decisions and be able to see exactly what's going on so again you've got that capability to maintain control but separate out the tasks if you need to if you're in a bigger business where you've got more people involved in the process or you can run it all simply just with a smaller number of people make sense now of course same scenario I can come in here and I can just go in here again and say no nah, I'm gonna pick all in this particular instance all right and then I can go in here and say update so that's now done and I'll say okay so now if I go across here and I now look at my picked you'll now see that all these have been picked so I can drill down and of course now from here I can go in and I can go and create my automatic delivery or I can issue them for production or whatever the case may be depending on what the original document was that I was picking based on all right so it becomes very very easy to manage that process and very very easy to gain uh, and keep control over exactly what's going on inside the organization so that's it that's your pick and pack manager makes life very very easy oh one other thing that I will point out as well let's say for example you have got your sales order I'll go and call up an existing sales order for the sake of the exercise so one of the things that you can see here assuming that um, everything is okay you can right click on your um, on your sales order and you'll see you can go down here and you can generate a pick list directly from the sales order so your processes might state that everything has to be picked all right you have to generate a pick list for everything because you want to see that yes the quantities were checked and you want to see who was the person that was doing the picking so that's part of your quality control process so you've still got all of that capability there so I can go here and I can just say generate a pick list and again same scenario documents awaiting approval are excluded but now I've got my new pick list so I can select that I can release it to the pick list let's go ahead and say next and generate again same scenario 
I've got my cancellation date problem here. Um, but the process is now exactly the same where the transactions just automatically roll on through that process. So again, what's the secret here? The secret here is flexibility. So that's it, that's the pick and pack manager. Uh, one of our more advanced areas of functionality in SAP Business One inventory management.